Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the case study one of Unit 1 March 2024 pre release case studies. The case study is all about Aki and it begins on page number three. I'll read each paragraph, then I'll analyze it. The case study begins. Aki is 43, single, and has 10 years remaining on his mortgage. He has always maintained a good financial plan, and his pension provision is on track for him to retire at 60. He has £15,000 in a notice savings account and some other investments. He does not have any outstanding debts except for his credit card. Aki earns £50,000 per annum plus bonuses. Aki's credit score is excellent, and he always has a surplus budget. So, Aki is 43, which means he is middle-aged and in the middle of the personal life cycle. He has 10 years remaining on his mortgage, a decade, and potentially that could be reduced if he decides to make overpayments. He has always maintained a good financial plan, and his pension provision is on track for him to retire at 60. So... That we don't know whether it comes with his job or whether the pension is uh, done privately. At 60 would be 17 years time. Now once again that could be affected by external factors uh, which uh, might mean that it could be brought forward or potentially even pushed back. He has £15,000 in a notice savings account. Now, a notice savings account is one where you must give notice to withdraw money or potentially face a penalty, such as three months of worth of interest, for example. And he has some other investments. These could be things such as stocks and shares, gold, or even property. He does not have any outstanding debts, so we have to assume that he doesn't have a student loan either, except for his personal credit card. At the moment, we don't know how much he's got on his personal credit card. Maybe we'll find out later on in the case study. He earns £50,000 per annum, which is just under the higher UK tax band, plus bonuses. These may be a substantial amount, or they might be quite uh, small. His credit score is excellent. He always has a surplus budget. Now, the fact that he's got a surplus budget could mean that he might be wise putting his money somewhere else in order to potentially generate a return. It could be into savings or potentially into investments. Let's have a look at the second paragraph. Aki works as an account manager for a company supplying forklift trucks to warehouse companies. Aki covers a wide geographical area of the south of England, from Cornwall to Norfolk, but he lives in Surrey. This means that Aki spends most of his days travelling either by car or by train to visit current and potential clients. Aki also visits his office in central London. So the fact he covers a wide geographical area suggests that he has high transportation costs and he lives in Surrey which is an expensive part of the country to live and of course to buy property. His office is in central London which means that it's highly likely if he travels by car he may face a congestion charge. The third paragraph. Aki's credit card has a £3,000 credit limit, which he uses for his travel and business expenses. He claims these expenses back from his company every week. He always uses this money to clear these debts he has built up on his credit card, as Aki's company repays his expenses within seven days of his claims. However, his credit card is never completely clear, as his expenses are frequent, except when he takes some time off for a holiday and all his expenses are paid up to date. So, he builds debt on his credit card, so basically is a frequent user of his credit card, but it's never completely clear, except when he takes time off for a holiday. Now, the fact that it's never completely clear means that there's the potential for interest charges if a payment is missed, potentially, but it seems like Aki pays his expenses back regularly, and all his expenses are paid up to date if he goes on a holiday. This means that if he goes on a holiday for seven days plus, then his expenses will be paid up to date, and it will clear his amount on his card. Aki feels that he uses his credit card wisely, and by only using his credit card for his expenses and always repaying the money back, he is not getting charged interest. Very occasionally, Aki comes close to his credit limit, if he has had to do a large amount of travelling. 
Sometimes he must travel to his company's European office in Athens. In a typical month, Aki will spend approximately £1,000 to £2,500 on his card, which is refunded through his expense claims. So, Aki feels he uses his credit card wisely, only uses his credit card for expenses, always pays the money back, so he's not getting charged interest. Therefore, we could say he's using his credit card sustainably. He'll spend approximately £1,000 to £2,500, this means that there's a potential for Aki to get substantial cash back or other rewards, and later on in the case study we'll see some potential options for him doing so. The next paragraph begins, Aki would like to explore if there is a way that he could benefit from using a credit card, as he has heard of cash back credit cards and other credit cards where rewards are given. He feels that there must be a catch here, that a credit card company would not give him money for no reason. Well, of course, Aki is potentially right. He believes that they'd give him, they wouldn't give him money for no reason, and the thing is, credit card companies always hope that customers will overspend or potentially not be able to make regular repayments, and therefore they can be charged interest. The paragraph at the bottom of page 3 Aki recently applied for a cashback credit card with a different company and was offered a premium card due to his income and his credit score. However, he hasn't yet completed the application. So remember, Aki earns £50,000 per annum per year plus bonuses, a substantial amount. And he's applied for a cashback credit card. This could be a significant benefit because, of course, the amount he spends each month, £1,000 to £2,500, means that he could gain from a substantial amount of cash back. You only have to work the figures out to see that he could make quite, quite sizable gains. Let's move on to page 4 of 17. Aki likes to go on holiday and uses his annual leave to travel. He loves to visit cities in Europe, and three times a year he visits his parents in Sweden. So, he would certainly benefit from a credit card that offers rewards for use abroad or travelling, for example, and he uses his annual leave, which is his paid holiday, to travel, including visiting his parents in Sweden. Now, the next part of the case study looks at the research, which might help you when you come to answering questions in the exam. It begins, what is a rewards credit card? A rewards credit card can be used for everyday spending, but it gives rewards such as cashback, air miles or loyalty points on some transactions. The more you spend, the more you can earn. And some cards might even give you access to exclusive deals. So there's three types of rewards discussed in this paragraph, cashback, air miles and loyalty points. As it says, the more you spend, the more you can earn. This can sometimes encourage people to spend to excess, but Aki wisely ensures that expenses on his card are cleared ASAP. What types of reward card can I get? There's a broad range of reward cards on offer, but they come in three basic types. The first is cashback. Every time you spend money on your plastic, cashback cards pay a percentage back to your account. This is good for those who want cash, which can then, of course, be spent on anything. Points is the second reward discussed. Spend on a points credit card and you accrue loyalty points that can be redeemed at popular high street stores. This is good if the cardholder shops at those particular high street stores that the card offers points towards. And the third reward is airline. Using an Air Miles credit card run in association with the airlines builds up points you can redeem for flights, hotel rooms and car hire. This would be attractive for regular travellers and of course we'd potentially include Aki within that group. Let's move on to page number 5. How to choose the best rewards card. With so many to choose from it can be hard to work out which is best for you. Here are some things to look out for. Number one, seek the best return. Rewards cards can pay cash back or give you points. For example, cash back is typically from 1 to 5% or more. 
A points card might give you one point for every £1, £5 or £10 that you spend. Check the terms of your card to see how much each point is worth when you redeem it. So the return is of course what you will get back in return for using the card and when we consider rewards cards that pay you cash back or give you points it's important to shop around and of course to read the small print. The second point refers to looking for the lowest fees. Keep in mind that some rewards cards charge an annual fee. Be confident that your spending will earn enough cash back and rewards to justify the cost. If you are unsure, go for a low or no fee credit card. So, some cards charge an annual fee. This is an important point to consider, of course, as the paragraph suggests you want to ensure that your rewards you get are more than the fee that you're actually paying. Um, it's worth doing potentially a cash flow forecast to establish how much you will actually put through the credit card. If you're unsure, go for a low or no fee credit card, a rewards card. In this case, you've got nothing to lose, as long, of course, as your spending is uh, paid back promptly. And the third point, choose rewards that you'll actually use. Points cards only give vouchers for specific stores, so even if a card offers you a great deal, make sure it fits your shopping habits. Likewise, airline rewards cards only offer deals on selected air carriers and hotels, so make sure it's one that you're happy to use. This is important for Aki, who is a regular traveller, to consider. Which, of course, would suit him best? Well, he must check that the airlines he uses are, of course, included in any rewards card he, he goes for. Is a rewards card right for me? Well, a rewards credit card could be right for you if you are able to use the card responsibly and pay off the balance on time and in full every month. If that is the case, then you don't need to change your spending habits and the rewards will just become a handy bonus to your regular credit card use. Aki, of course, pays off his card regularly, so he ensures that no balance is carried over, therefore reducing the potential for him being charged interest. In addition, a rewards credit card linked to a particular retailer could prove even more valuable if you already shop there regularly. This is something for Aki to consider. Maybe he purchases petrol frequently. Of course, he is a regular traveller and regular user of the road networks covering such a vast distance for his job. Therefore, maybe a petrol uh, rewards card. Or maybe he uses the train, or even, as we discussed earlier, an airlines card, which would give him air miles. Why do credit cards offer rewards then? Well, every time you use your credit card, your credit card provider charges a small fee to the merchant, that's uh, the shop, and when you use a rewards card, they share some of that money with you. So that's how they make money, another way that they make money, by charging the actual merchant themselves. By offering rewards, your credit card company encourages you to spend more widely. On to page number six. This means more sales for the vendor, more profit for the credit card issuer, and a little extra money in your pocket too. So there's various stakeholders who will benefit from you using a credit card. How many reward card credit cards can I have? Well, there is no limit to the number of reward credit cards you can have, although in terms of managing your personal finances, you do not want to have too many cards to have to pay off each month. This is good advice because it's easier to manage if you've got fewer cards. That said, direct debits to pay off the balance can also support credit card users to ensure that they don't have a balance carrying over from one month to the next. The source for this information is moneysupermarket.com, which is a price comparison website. Middle, midway down page 6 begins, what is a premium credit card? Well, a premium credit card works similarly to an ordinary credit card. You buy goods and services and have a credit limit. In the case of these most exclusive credit cards, however, you will need to have an excellent credit history in order to be successful in your application. 
Of course, needing an excellent credit history, Aki does have a strong credit history and is a high earner. This is because the difference with these exclusive credit cards is that the spending limit is much higher and they come with a range of special perks and rewards. What is included with a premium credit card? Well, the main selling point of premium cards are the exclusive benefits available to cardholders. These will vary depending on the card you choose, but may include a high credit limit. Aki has come close to his credit limit in the past, which is of course currently £3,000. They provide comprehensive worldwide travel insurance for you and your family. Once again, this could be attractive as Aki is a regular traveller. Breakdown cover or road size assistance. Aki does a lot of miles in his car as part of his account manager role, so therefore this might be a benefit to him. Reward or loyalty points, which you can exchange for a wide variety of goods and services, including flights. So Aki enjoys travelling and periodically visits his parents in Sweden, which might mean that would be a good reward for him. A concierge or personal assistance service, available 24 hours a day to help you arrange almost anything. This is a major benefit for many cardholders and as it says, you can use this concierge or personal assistance service to book anything 24 hours a day, whether that be train tickets, flights, uh, theatre tickets, etc. It, will, it may also get you ex access to exclusive airport lounges worldwide. Once again, this could be an attractive proposition for Aki during his annual leave holidays. Let's move on to page 7. For some people, particularly those who travel frequently, these benefits can be very appealing, saving time and making life a little easier and more comfortable. How does it compare to a standard card then? Well, exclusive credit cards almost always come with an annual fee, whereas many ordinary credit cards do not. So the fact that these come with annual fees means that they're only justifiable if the benefits Aki realises are actually greater than the fee he will have to pay. The rewards are greater than those available with ordinary cards and you are able to spend a lot more on your premium credit card because the credit limit, i.e. the maximum amount you are allowed to spend, will be set much higher. This is good as Aki has been close to his credit limit in the past. So what are the advantages of premium credit cards then? Premium credit cards give you access to services that may be very useful for you if you travel frequently. For example, access to premium airport lounges and comprehensive travel insurance. Of course, Aki travels frequently for work and on his holidays. And the fact that these sometimes come with comprehensive travel insurance could give him real good peace of mind. Some very high-end premium credit cards are available on an invitation-only basis, while others specify a minimum income that cardholders must meet. Perhaps the most iconic of these invitation-only cards is the American Express Centurion card, sometimes known as the Black Card. These are reserved for the company's wealthiest clients. Most premium credit cards will insist on a strong credit history, so it could be worth checking your credit report before you apply. However, bear in mind that actually checking your credit card, your credit report, may leave a financial footprint on your credit file. So are there any disadvantages? Well, the costs can be much higher than ordinary credit cards. If you make use of all the services, then the best premium cards can be worthwhile. But you need to weigh up whether you will make the most use out of the perks. Also, because the credit limit is high, you may be tempted to spend a lot on the card, so you do not so you do need to have a plan to pay off the balance. These are really good points and it's very important for Aki to consider if he goes down this route. He needs to potentially do a cost benefit analysis to see if the cost is more or less than the benefits he would of course receive. Let's move to page number 8. Understanding the costs of premium credit cards. 
the APR on premium credit cards can also look very high, often around the 50% mark. This is because the annual fee has to be shown as part of the APR under Credit Consumer Credit Act regulations. Now the APR, the annual percentage rate, is used to compare credit cards and other forms of borrowing. So if the standard APR for purchases was 16.8% for example, and the card had a £250 annual fee, the APR would have to be shown actually as 51.8%, taking the fee into consideration. So people looking for credit cards will need to consider this when choosing their credit card. Who can get a premium credit card then? Well, before we go through this final paragraph, make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to be notified when future videos are released. The final paragraph, not all these exclusive credit cards are available publicly. Often, you must receive an invitation from the card issuer in order to get one. You usually have to be earning at least £40,000 per annum and have a good credit record. These exclusive credit cards sometimes come in the form of a black credit card, platinum credit card or a gold credit card in order to stand out from ordinary cards. So you usually have to be earning at least 40, Aki earns £50,000 per year plus bonuses which would make him eligible and the cards which come in different colours, black, platinum or gold, to stand out from ordinary cards, well, this might be important to some people, including Aki, as a status symbol, and he needs to weigh up whether that would be particularly important or less significant for him. The source for the information is uswitch.com. This is a price comparison site that also offers a product switching service. Hope you found the information useful. If you haven't already, hit that like button and subscribe for future related videos. I'll see you in the next one.